Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. I believe this is going to be the conclusion of the War in Heaven, War on Earth. Now we're covering the War on Earth we are going to study Esau and Edom. We studied about the uh, origin of the Canaanites in previous studies. And, uh, well, let's get going. All right. In Genesis chapter 26, just for a recap, verse 34. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith... Isn't that an interesting name, Judith? The daughter of Beer I, I'm sure it's Beery, Beer I, the Hittite, and Bashimath, uh, Bashimath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. Huh. What about Elon Musk, right? But uh, the Hittites were a branch of the Canaanites that God said, uh, you know, don't 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 fool around with those people. They're bad news. But you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25. Now remember, God made a promise to Abraham he would be the father of many nations. And one little nation in the, in the Middle East is not many. Okay, so, verse 19, Genesis 25 and 19. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister of to Laban the Syrian. Now, from what I understand, the word Laban means white. Verse 21, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. So, she couldn't, she wasn't having any kids. No matter how hard Isaac tried, she wasn't having any kids. And the Lord was entreated of of him and Rebekah his wife conceived. Verse 22, here's the punchline. And the children struggled together. Children, plural. And the children struggled together with her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? In other words, what in the world is going on? Uh, that's the Bob translation. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Boy, can you imagine the days when you could go and ask the Lord something? Boy, I'm afraid of what he would tell me, but uh, so. Verse 23. So she's asking the Lord, what in the world is going on? These two kids are fighting in my belly. What in the world is going on? And the Lord said unto her, two nations, same word as Gentile, you know, they could have said, uh, if the King James translators were consistent, they could have said, two Gentiles are in thy womb. But, uh, you know, I, it, I don't say it's a mistranslation. I don't. Sometimes the Lord hides things from people on purpose. That's why he did the parables. He doesn't want everybody to know and understand so perhaps, you know, that's why I don't like uh, most of these so-called Christian identity preachers. They'll tell you, oh, see, this is a mistranslation in the King James Bible. Well, then you ask them, well, what Bible do you recommend that doesn't have mistranslations? And they'll, they'll never answer you. Never. They won't give you a straight answer. Of course, they want you to run to them to... Uh, un un mistranslate the bible you know they want 
They want to be the final authority. I just don't believe that. You know, sometimes it's just like there in the Bible, the sometimes the books like Revelation, it's not in chronological order. Sometimes it'll talk about the present, then it'll talk about the future, then it'll go back to the past, then the present, past, and then it starts talking about the future again. It's, you know, it, it's, the Lord does that so that people couldn't, unless you have the Spirit of the Lord, you just won't understand. So the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. You know what? What, uh, what color is the communist flag? Give you a little hint. It's red. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. Now, remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel by God himself. Okay? Jacob and Israel are synonymous. Verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now, I did an entire Bible study on why God was not real crazy about Esau. And I'll post it in the description link so that, you know, if you want to watch it, you can. I mean, there are so many doctrines woven into the Bible. It's it's like a piece of cloth. You you take a piece of cloth and you start following one string or one piece of thread and it leads to so many different other ones. It's just unbelievable. All right, so verse 29. And Jacob sawed pottage. Uh, in other words, he made bean stew. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. So if you see Esau or Edom, there's, it's synonymous, just like Jacob and Israel, synonymous. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. See, the birthright was what uh, was a blessing from God. The firstborn would get a double inheritance. Uh, didn't work for me, but, uh, well, I guess I got an inheritance from the Lord. But uh, my earthly birthright failed. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. Oh, yes, I'm hungry. I'm starving to death. And he says, and what profit shall the birthright do to me? In other words, God gave him a gift. And he says, ah, pff, what good is this? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swear unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Can you imagine God gives you a blessing and you sell it for a bowl of beans? Well, that's what Jacob did. I mean, es that's what Esau did to for Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Esau hated the gift of God, period. All right. Remember, people, two manner of peoples are in the womb. Uh, you know, either God could see in the future 
Esau doing all this, or our soul spirits existed in some form with the Lord before we were born into this earthly tabernacle of flesh, and he observed our behavior and knew what we would do and who we would serve before we were born in the flesh. I am kind of of that opinion, but you know, maybe it's both. I don't know. I mean, when you're an eternal being, does time really matter? Now, in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, the Lord says to Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in the belly. Interesting. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. How did he know him? How did the Lord know Jeremiah before he was formed in the belly, before he was even conceived and born? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Well, could have been the same word as Gentiles. Just keep that in mind, people. All right. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 7. Let's read the story. Verse 1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old, now remember, it's Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob, Israel. And his eyes were dim so that he could not see. He called Esau, his oldest son, and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out into the field and take me some venison. So go hunt me a deer. Verse 4. Uh, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. So here it is. Isaac is going to bless Esau, a guy that married the satanic Canaanite line, the guy that, well, I tell you what, let's take a look at how, what God feels about Esau. Uh, well, let's take a look. Turn to Malachi chapter 1. Malachi chapter 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Remember, there's two nations in Rebekah's womb. Two manner of people. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. See, God said to Israel, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. Huh. And I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Does that sound like uh, uh, God loves everybody? No, absolutely not. And people will tell you that, you know, well... When the Lord says he hates here, it just means he loves a little less. Well, it's the same word that he used when he, God says he hates feet that are swift running to mischief, hands that shed innocent blood, uh, those that spread discord uh, among the brethren. Same word, you know, when God says he hated Esau, it doesn't mean he loved him less. It means he hated, hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And the Bible says a man's heritage is his children. Verse 4, Whereas Edom saith, now we're talking Esau, Edom, right? We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Wow. 
You mean like the Middle East? You know, the desert? But we will return and build the desolate places, thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. You know what indignation is? Extreme hatred. Now, who is he talking about here? Esau, Edom, the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Wow. Uh, how about in the New Testament? Romans 9.13 As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Wow. Are you getting the idea here? Esau despised his birthright. Esau was hated of the Lord. He married into the Canaanite, polluted Canaanite line. Okay? Now, what's really interesting, there's an encyclopedia. Uh, you know, when your mouth is full, you chew. Uh, yeah, it's the Chew-ish encyclopedia. You look up the article, and it says, Edom, you know, Esau Edom, is in modern, uh, it's in the modern day Chew-ish people. You can look it up. Uh, Google is scrubbing all this stuff from the uh, internet. You can't even hardly find it anymore. 15 years ago, it was easy to find. It's getting hard to find, but... Uh, their own encyclopedia, when you look up Edom, E-D-O-M, will, uh, you know, it says that they were in modern, they're in, they're in modern, the group over in the Middle East. Yeah. Now, King Herod, according to Josephus, you know, the guy that, uh, family that killed all the children in Bethlehem trying to kill Jesus as a child. Yeah, that group. Herod was of Esau Edom. And uh, Pilate, when he heard that Jesus was of Galilee, he sent him to Herod. And Herod tried to get Jesus to do a magic trick for him, but Jesus didn't say a word, not one word to Herod. Nothing. Why? Why? Did he try to tell him to repent and believe on him? No. You don't believe me? Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Luke chapter 23, verse 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him, Jesus, and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. Liars. He never said that. He said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and the things to God that, that belongs to God. I'm paraphrasing, but. And forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying, he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, thou sayest it. The Bob translation would be, if you say so. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged under Herod's jurisdiction, see, Pilate didn't want anything to do with this trial. So he's going to, he, uh, and as soon as he knew that he belonged into Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. Ah. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Oh yeah, he wanted to see a magic show. Well, that's probably in his mind. But listen to this. Here's the punchline. 
Then he, Pilate, questioned with him, Jesus, in many words. But he, Jesus, but he answered him nothing. Christ didn't say not one word to Herod, nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently, vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of, uh, men of war, set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. Wow. <sighs> and Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. You know, Pilate wanted nothing to do with this. And why did Jesus not say a word to Herod? He, you know, Herod was an Edomite uh, of Canaanite blood. I personally, they don't have any salvation. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. So, God hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. All right, so let's go back. All right, let's go back to Genesis 27. So, I guess we'll go verse 3. All right, so Isaac says, Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. So Isaac is telling Esau, Go, go get me some deer meat. And make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, and that my soul may bless thee before I die. So he's going to bless the serpent's seed. Verse 5. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Now Rebekah's got more spiritual sense than her husband. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, now Rebekah's talking to Jacob Israel here, Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, that he may bless thee before his death. Now remember, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. Now, Rebekah is going to have Jacob get the, birth, uh, the blessing from his father Isaac. All right, and thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father peradventure will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I will bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. In other words, go get the goats. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the uh, the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands, and upon the smooth of his neck, and she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came in, and he came unto his father and said, "My father." And he said, 
Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast fasted so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it nearer to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field, which the Lord hath blessed. Now here's the blessing. Here's the blessing. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven. Uh, you know, rain, right? You don't have any water. You could, you, you could pack it in. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing, Jacob, uh, and made an end of blace, blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. All right, so. The blessing, the dew of heaven, fatness of the earth, plenty of corn and wine, uh, let people serve Jacob Israel, nations bow down to her to be lord over his uh, the brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. And that include Esau's children for a while. Anybody that curses Jacob Israel is going to be cursed, and anybody that blesses them will be blessed. So, and if you think that little country in the Middle East is what we're talking about, um, I suggest you open up your Bible to Galatians 3.29 and read that about, I don't know, 50 times or less until you get it. All right, so... That um, And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and, Israel, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Jacob his brother came in from his hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father. And he said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless thee. And Isaac his father said unto him, who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him, yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and hath taken away thy blessing. Praise the Lord for, uh, for the, the mother. She had more spiritual sense than Isaac. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. Oh, boo-hoo, Esau. He took your birthright away. You didn't want your birthright. You hated your birthright. You sold it for a, a 
bowl of beans. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. Can you imagine had Isaac blessed Esau's Canaanite wives and children? Can you imagine that? I don't think so. He hath taken away my blessing, and he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Isaac said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Listen carefully. And by thy sword shalt thou live. And shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So Esau is going to live by the sword. He's going to be a very violent, warlike individual. He's going to serve Israel until it comes to the time when he'll have dominion. That means dominate. Then he's going to break the yoke from off his neck. What's a yoke? It's a collar you put on a farm animal to you know, carry, uh, to pull a plow behind, right? That's what a yoke is. It's a burden. So he's going to break a yoke from off the neck. And he's going to have dominion over Jacob Israel. And guess what? That's happening today, people. Verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father at hand, then will I slay my brother Jacob. Oh, yeah. Has anything changed? No, nothing. All right, for those of you that don't know it, Adumia is a, a reference, and Mount Seir, S-E-I-R, uh, is a reference to the location of where the Edomites, the Esau's descendants, lived. So let's take a look at Isaiah 34, how much God loves Esau. Isaiah 34, 1. Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that are that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath deliver, delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Listen carefully. Uh, this is Revelation-type language. Verse 4, and, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Boy, that's Revelation-type language, isn't it? Verse 5, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, Behold, it shall come down upon Adumia and upon the people of my curse. The people of my curse. Oh yeah, God loves Esau, right? And upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams, and the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Oh, yeah. 
All right, if you uh, are curious, uh, Genesis 32, 3, And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother unto the land of Seir, S-E-I-R, the country of Edom. All right? Uh, let's see. Genesis 36, 8, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Verse 9, and these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. All right, so Esau is Edom. Edom are the Edomites. Um, he lives in Mount Seir, and Seir, Mount Seir is uh, where is, well, Ezekiel thirty-five fifteen. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee that thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Idumea, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. All right, so God's not happy with Esau, Edom, Idumea, Edomites, Mount Seir. Again, Isaiah 34, 5, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. All right, let's go to the book of Hebrews. Uh, let's see, chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator. Fornicator. What's a fornicator? What's the difference between a fornicator and an adulterer? A fornicator is somebody that is unmarried. An adulterer or an adulteress is somebody that has a husband or a wife. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. But wait a minute, Esau married his Hittite wives, yet he's called a fornicator. Why? Because that marriage was not honorable in the Lord's eyes. It was profane. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. God rejected Esau because Esau rejected God. Continued, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Oh boy. Let's read Obadiah 1.18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. What is stubble? It's something you burn. And they shall kindle within them, and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Yeah. Why? Because he uh, ruined his... His heritage with his children, with the Canaanites, he destroyed it. The Hittites. The Hittites were a sub-tribe of the Canaanites. But we learned that there will come a time when Esau will break the yoke of Jacob Israel off his neck. Personally, I think that's coming to pass today. Esau Edom has broken the power of Jacob Israel. After all, uh, they've had the great nations of Jacob Israel fight each other in World War I and World War II. But uh, that's my little history lesson. All right, well, let's take, just remember that uh, Edom would be 
live by the sword. They'd be a very violent people. And that in the there would come a time when they would throw off the yoke of Jacob Israel. Now, let's go to Obadiah chapter 1 again. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Remember, Esau's Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Hmm. So Esau and Edom is among the heathens. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, listen carefully, behold, I have made thee small, small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Do you know a small group of heathens that are greatly despised? Uh, let's see. Is there a small group of people among, you know, that are heathens and are greatly despised? Hmm. What group of people have been kicked out of every country in Europe at least once? Uh, take a guess. They're in the Middle East. They have a homeland in the Middle East. It was created in 1948. And they dare to call themselves Israel. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Wow. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And, uh, wow. Wow. And thy mighty man, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Wow. You can read the rest of this on your own, but I think you're getting the general idea. God is not happy with Esau Edom. And like I said, the chew, you know, when your mouth is full, you chew uh, the Chewish encyclopedia says that Edom is in modern, uh, well, it's in their, let's just say they're over in the Middle East, and they admit it. You, you can read it. Look, Go to that encyclopedia and look up uh, Edom, E-D-O-M. Look it up. Matter of fact, uh, you know, King Herod was the one that built the temple. And there's a whole group of them today that want to build the temple again. Uh, there's the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute. Whether or not they'll do it, uh, do I know for a certainty? No, but I'll tell you what. Usually what they want, they usually get. And it would be the ultimate, the ultimate blasphemy against what Jesus did on the cross. Um, you know, Animal blood sacrifice. And while you're at it, look up the Noah Hyde laws. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Look up those laws. Uh, the first one is blasphemy against the Lord is punishable by death. Method of execution, beheading. 
Huh, where have I read that before? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Oh, and that thousand years, that's just the introduction, people. That is only the introduction. So, check it out. Esau, Edom is breaking the yoke of Jacob Israel in the latter days. And it's here. In 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. All right, this is the end of the War on Earth series. Um, I hope you learned something. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. All glory, praise, and honor be to them. In Jesus' name, amen.